Welcome to Blinded by Science, a weekly appreciation of all things science. I'm your host, Anthony Namfito, sci-fi writer and teacher. But for this podcast, you can think of me as your science ambassador. You can subscribe to Blinded by Science on the YouTube channel Namfito Space or wherever you listen to podcasts. Visit anchor.fm forward slash blinded by science for more details. All right, let's get to the science. Welcome to another episode of Blinded by Science. In today's episode, we're appreciating the 4,000-year-old invention that gives each of us the ability to protect ourselves and others from illness every day, but especially during a global pandemic. And that wonderful invention is soap, first created around 2800 BCE by the ancient Babylonians. Ancient tablets reveal the recipe for soap often contained fats, either animal or vegetable, and ashes or alkaline salts to make bars of soap. It was used to clean wool and cotton for clothing, as well as for medicinal purposes, too. However, it wasn't until the late 1800s that there was a strong push for regular hand washing by surgeons and doctors. Can you imagine that? In fact, there was even pushback by the surgeons and doctors. They didn't want to wash their hands. Thank goodness times have changed. And even later than that, there was a campaign for the general public to wash their hands regularly with soap and water. What's interesting to me is that the recipe for soap hasn't changed much for thousands of years. It wasn't until about the 1800s that modern soap-making methods were created. And it wasn't until the 1970s that we got liquid soap. But here's what really fascinates me about this ancient substance. It is our first line of defense against dangerous viruses and bacteria like COVID-19, the flu, and the common cold. Let's dive into how this slick substance sticks, rips, and kicks germs down the drain. First, we need to talk about the molecular structure of soap. There's a video link in the description which goes into detail about the chemical bonds, but I'll cover the basics here. Soap molecules have two sides. One side is the dark side, and one side is the light side. And their interaction binds the universe together Oops, I'm sorry. I think these are my notes for a Star Wars essay. Let me find my soap notes, my soap notes. Ah, here they are. Okay, so soap molecules have two ends. One end is attracted to water, and the other is attracted to fats. This dualism is important, and you'll find out why in a moment. Hmm, I guess the Star Wars notes weren't as far off in a faraway galaxy as I thought. Anyways. Back to the science. Remember those soap molecules? Well, one end is attracted to the water, and another end is attracted to fats. Hold on to that thought for a minute, and let's talk about what's going on with the viruses and bacteria at the molecular level. Most bacteria and viruses have a wall of fat molecules that make them super sticky. And what do they like to stick to? You guessed it, your skin. Now, if those germs are lucky, they get stuck to your skin and then you inadvertently ingest them, usually when you eat something or touch your face, and once inside your body, they start to have a party that makes you sick, something none of us wants. So how can we prevent it? Well, it comes back to the unique dualism of the soap molecule. Remember, One side of the soap molecule is attracted to water, and the other side is attracted to fats. When you go to wash your hands with soap and water, everything starts mixing together. The soap with the water, the water with the soap, the germs such as viruses and bacteria, it's a big swirling mixer of a party. However, this isn't your typical night out to the clubs. Remember how I said the soap molecules have two ends, one end attracted to water and one end attracted to fats? And remember how most viruses and bacteria have an outer layer of fat, which makes them stick to your skin? Well, the end of the soap molecule attracted to the water pairs with the water molecules in the soap-water mixture. And the end of the soap molecule attracted to fats 
pairs with the fat molecules that make up the outer layer of viruses and bacteria. As you swish, swirl, and wash your hands, the soap molecules pull apart the viruses and bacteria. Yes, that means the soap molecules are literally destroying the viruses and bacteria by ripping them apart like a dog rips off the head of a Barbie doll. Sorry, Barbie. But not sorry to the viruses and bacteria. There are a few germs that don't get ripped apart. But all that vigorous swishing and swirling you're doing as you move the soap water mixture over and around your hands does separate them from your skin so that when you rinse the soap water mixture from your hands, it all washes down the drain. And your hands are freshly clean and germ-free, just in time to eat that snack you've been craving. But wait, before you cram that delicious snack down your hungry pie hole, there's one thing you need to know. This process takes time. About how much time? Well, I'm sure you've guessed that too because you've worked hard to be a survivor in a global pandemic. It takes about 20 seconds for the soap molecules to do their destructive work of ripping germs from your skin and tearing them apart. Hence, the importance of thoroughly washing your hands, the palms, the backs, in between the fingers and thumbs, everywhere, for 20 seconds. But what viruses and bacteria does it work on? And what kind of soap do you need? Well, it turns out it doesn't really matter what kind of soap. It doesn't even need to be marketed as antibacterial. That's right. Regular, old-fashioned soap will work. Even fancy soap, luxuriously lathering soap from little boutique shops downtown, they're all great choices. As long as it's soap, it works. In fact, there's a great Vox video linked in the description that shows some amazing demonstrations of soap in action destroying germs. Check it out. As for the type of pathogens and germs it works on, well, it works on coronaviruses, such as COVID-19, HIV, the viruses that cause hepatitis B and C, herpes, Ebola, Zika, dengue, and numerous bacteria that can attack your intestines and respiratory tract. That's a lot of work for a 4,000-year-old substance. Not bad. Soap just works. It's simple. It's science. So wash your hands for 20 seconds after you go to the bathroom. Yes, for number one and number two. Wash your hands for 20 seconds before you eat anything. Wash your hands for 20 seconds after you've been out in the germ-infested world. When you wash your hands, you help keep yourself and others safe from illness. That means during this time of a global pandemic, you literally have the world in your hands. So wash them, please, for 20 seconds. Count to 20. Sing a song. Whatever you need to do to make sure those hands are clean and free of viruses and bacteria. I believe in you and I know you can do it. All right, we'll take a short break, maybe about 20 seconds or more, so you can wash your hands if you need to. And then it's time for our second segment, Science Did What? Hey, it's Anthony here. Thanks for listening to the show. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying creating it. If you want to support the show, consider leaving a review on iTunes. This helps increase the show's rating and its discoverability so others can appreciate science too. All right, let's get back to the show. Welcome back. It's time for the second segment. Science did what? the part of the show where I share an interesting science story about what's happening right now in scientific research. For today's story, we're going to move away from soap, germs, and the pandemic and talk about woodpeckers. Woodpeckers can be found worldwide, except in Australia, New Guinea, and the polar regions. But they are most abundant in South America and Southeast Asia. They are a migratory bird that uses its beak to nail into bark of trees and find some tasty treats with its four-inch-long tongue. 
Until recently, scientists were unsure of how woodpeckers were able to peck their way into trees without getting stuck. As an example, if you take a nail and hammer it into a tree, it's not easy to get out. But somehow, our friendly woodpecker, who can peck a tree 20 times a second, is able to remove its beak without a problem. If you're scratching your head wondering how this is possible, you're not alone. Scientists were right there with you. Thankfully, a recent study involving high-speed footage has revealed that woodpeckers have independent control of their upper and lower beaks. According to sciencemag.org, quote, Once the tip of the woodpecker's bill hits the wood, the bird's head rotates to the side ever so slightly, lifting the top part of the beak and twisting it a bit in the other direction, the videos reveal. This pull opens the bill a tiny amount and creates free space between the beak tip and the wood at the bottom of the punctured hole so the bird can easily retract its beak, end quote. If you want to see a video clip of this, check out the link in the description. It's a short clip, so I recommend watching it a few times and watch closely because the head movement is subtle. This is amazing. The wonders of nature never cease to amaze me. Before this, scientists had assumed the woodpeckers' beaks were rigidly fastened to their skulls, allowing them to pound into the tree bark. But this recent study reveals the truth of what's happening. Amazing. And just when you think we, as a society, understand the world, Mother Nature surprises us. And that's the power of science. Remember, it's a process for testing and refining our ideas over time, because the more we know, the better we can be. Hey, it's Anthony here. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Science is all about collaboration. If you enjoyed what you've heard on the show, share it with a friend so they can enjoy it too. Science is all about sharing and keeping others up to date. All right, let's get back to the show. Thanks for listening to this episode of Blinded by Science. This podcast was recorded, produced, and distributed by yours truly, Anthony Nanfito, using anchor.fm. The theme song is Crimson Fly by Huma Huma. The logo was designed by myself using the app Over with image credit to nasa.gov. If you liked what you heard, subscribe to the podcast on the YouTube channel Nanfito Space or listen wherever you get your podcasts. To support the show financially, learn how to subscribe or listen to previous episodes, visit anchor.fm forward slash blinded by science for more details. Until next time, I encourage you to find the science in your life and share it with me on social media. You can find me on Twitter at Words by Fifi and on Instagram at Haiku by Fifi. Tag me in your posts and show me the science you discovered. This is Anthony Nanfito signing off. And remember, stay curious.